Okay. So fishing. Um, well, when I was six years old, um, I begged my parents to take me fishing, and um, finally my parents realized that I wasn't going to take no for an answer, so they ended up calling up my grandfather, and uh, he fished, um, I know he fished saltwater, I think he did just a few trips, you know, here and there, local ponds and stuff, um, but he ended up taking my brother and I and my mom and dad out fishing, and I caught my first, uh, my first sunfish, and from there... That was it. I just couldn't wait to get back out again. I knew it was something that I loved to do and I was going to keep on doing it. So I have. Um, when I was 16 years old, I went and got a couple rods and reel combos and um, took my brother who was a couple years younger and we headed off to little local lakes and ponds and uh, got some bluegills or uh, just little panfish off of uh, live bait, bobbers, that sort of thing and um, just kind of figured it out as we went. And then as I got older and started meeting other people and getting on different forums and websites and um, just researching and, and learning more about fishing, it just became that much more fun. It was always that challenge of trying to catch new species or um, try to catch a bigger one than the last one I caught. Um, my favorite type of fishing is finesse fishing. I just love using um, little light jigs and little plastics and um, light line, a lot of mono. We have a river that runs through here, uh, through town, the Fox River here in Illinois. And it's a lot of fun to get, you know, especially in the springtime, we'll get four to six pound mono and put that out with like little plastics. Right now, actually, I'm using, um, this one's been doing really well. It's just a little, little plastic with a nice long tail with a lot of action. Um, just on a light jig, something like this, um, just enough to get it down there a little bit, not, you know, not a big fall, but just a little bit to where they get in that strike zone and, and get those fish. Um, I love to go to the stores and I, I find these little bait shops and they have these cool little things like new baits that I haven't seen before. I found this one recently. Um, it's got these crazy little paddle legs on it. And I haven't tried it yet, but I'm excited to see what it's going to do. That's, that's a lot of the fun in fishing, is just finding different things out there on the market that come out and buy it and just see what it does. You know, most times it will catch, catch fish. So, um, I also uh, work at a hair salon. I'm a, a hair designer. And a lot of my clients through the years have, uh, it's kind of my clientele has kind of evolved into fishermen, um, whether it's... The client that fishes or somebody they know that fishes and they end up telling their friend or their brother or uncle or whoever that fishes you gotta go see this girl you know she's got pictures up everywhere of fish and um, she loves a fish so my clientele has become that so they'll bring in their tackle and they'll share it with me and and they'll um, I've had a couple of clients bring in a contour map of a lake and They'll say, you know, where's the walleye? Mark them on here. Here's the pencil. Mark them on the, on, on the map for me so I can go find them. And, and sometimes they do. You know, it's obviously I they get this false impression that I know it all. But I do study a lot. Like I said, the Internet is fantastic for finding um, just different articles. I love learning about just the different species and what their habits are, what they relate to, what type of bait they chase. Um, that's fun for me. I'm like a sponge. When I'm interested in something, I dive into it 100%. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy um, going down to the river and seeing families down there. Um, I was down at the river on Sunday, I believe it was, and there was this father and son, and the father had no idea, um, really not a whole lot about fishing. And, and the son, you know, was you could see that eagerness in him, and he was just so excited to catch his fish and um, I noticed them when we when we walked up, a friend and I were fishing, and I just kind of glanced over and saw them over there and went over to the dam, and my friend had uh, been there earlier, and he said that he was catching them in the dam, you know, throwing it way up in there. So we went over there to see what we can find, and I, I threw my jig up in there, and um, sure enough, it was like the second cast I had a smallmouth on, and it was a pretty decent one. It fought really good. The current, you know, I'm fighting the current, but I also was fighting that fish just did not want to come in. So... That was really cool, and the father and son happened to see that, and they they came running over, and, and they kind of kept their distance a little bit, and 
once I brought that fish in, the kid just had this big grin on his face and he was like, wow, like I want to catch one of those. And the father ended up um, coming over and he's like, do you mind if I ask what you're using? And I'm like, not at all, you know. So I, I, I got in my tackle bag and I gave him a couple of, um, I was actually using, like I said, just these little little uh, plastic minnows. And I ended up giving him a couple, a couple jigs. I said, here, you know, tie that on for him. And he was a little embarrassed. He always said, I don't even know how to tie it on. So I helped him out, got it all rigged up for him. And, you know, I said, he, he kept saying to me, he's like, you know, you're being so nice. And I said, well, that's, that's how everybody should be. You know, we're all out there to catch fish. We're out there to enjoy it for whatever reason. Um, it's a passion in us or, you know, his son, I, I saw that little gleam in his eye where he just, he had that, you know, that desire to be out there and just catch fish and I wanted to help him out. So, um, unfortunately, we had them, we had them follow, follow us around, which was fortunate. They were a really great couple of guys, but um, unfortunately, we didn't catch any more fish. But I, I was able to sit with him, my friend and I were able to sit with him and, and teach him different things about fishing and um, what's a, what you're feeling when you, when you got your lure on the bottom. Is it rock? Is it sand? Is it mud? Um, kind of just cluing him in on those little things that, you know, if you're not studying and you're not, you know, out there with people that know that it's going to take you sometimes years to figure that stuff out. So I wanted to give him that little heads up, step up in, in fishing to where he can get out there with a little bit of knowledge next time when he's with his dad and, and a little bit of confidence. Because um, let's face facts, I mean, fishing, to me, it's, uh, it's 90% confidence. If I'm not confident when I'm using, it's going to take me a while to catch a fish on it. If I don't believe I'm going to, that's that's rough. I'm having a bad day out there if I don't have that confidence. Um, and sometimes I like to get out of that comfort zone. Um, a lot of times, actually, so that I can gain that confidence. Um, but that's that's the whole learning process. So, yeah, I, I it's fun for me to teach other people and to show to see that kid get all excited. And um, he had some, you know, Walmart brand or grocery store brand rod and reel. It was. It was very unbalanced and very heavy and very awkward in his hands. He was probably about, I don't know, 10 years old. And I handed him my rod and reel, and he, he was like, wow, this is this is really neat. It's so light, and he was able to cast it better. And, you know, and I said, I kind of told him how much it was, and I said, that's down the road a little bit for you, but at least, you know, you know what to look forward to and why down the road when you are looking at the price tags of this stuff, like why it costs so much and, you know, the value of it, I guess you should say. Um, there definitely is a lot of value in, when you start really moving up and fishing to your gear. Um, it makes a huge difference. Like I said, you can feel a difference between a sand bottom, a rock bottom, um, things like that. Um, I just, I, I like to have fun on the water. Um, every time I go out there, it's just, either whether it's the scenery, the beautiful sunrise or sunset, um, that really just takes your breath away. I enjoy that part of it. I enjoy, you know, watching an eagle soar. We were um, on a lake up in Wisconsin, Lake Geneva, and it was late fall. The winds were terrible. We went to three different launches to try to get on the lake, and every launch we went to, um, there was sleet that morning too, and all the, the launches were ice, and a lot of the launches that were like a, a steep kind of incline, and um, our fear was that we'd, we'd go to launch the boat, and we'd just keep on going into the lake, and that would not be good. Um, you don't want the truck to go in the lake too. So we kept trying to find a, a, a launch that we could get on. And we finally did find one and um, it was raining all day. It was just one of those those days that most people look outside the window and say, oh, it's a miserable day out there to us. It was like fish, you know, it's late fall. That's, that's fishing. That's where we want to be. We want to be in that. Um, the winds weren't so bad to where you weren't able to get a little presentation going, but it was it was it was one of those late fall days that you just you know are going to be there. Um, but we finally got on the lake, and, and these eagles were soaring up ahead, and I got some pictures of them. And one was coming down, and it was just diving on these coop. Um, I don't even know if that's a real name for them. But these fat birds, they can't they they run across the water because they're so fat they can't take off right away. Um, but the eagle was just diving on them right in front of our boat right off our bow. And there was actually people, there's a road right there, we were in a bay, and these people pulled over and they were um, taking pictures of the eagle diving too, as we were also, and and, and then they, they turned their cameras on us like, 
look at these crazies out there fishing. Um, but it, it was a good day. I mean, we we ended up catching fish, and you know that that's all we care about. As long as I'm catching fish, I don't care what the elements are. A lot of times I'll forget. You know, I'll be freezing, and my hands will be so cold I can barely move them, and I. I'll hook into a big walleye and I'm warm as can be. You know, it's it's like the whole weather change and it's 70 degrees out to me. Um, it's just fishing just, when I'm fishing, everything else around me just turns off. And I love that part of it. It, it just, it recharges me. Um, I can't explain, the, the, the closest I can come to explaining how I feel when I'm out there fishing and I'm catching fish is probably that feeling you get as a kid when it's, you know, Christmas morning and you're going to open all those presents and you know you're going to get things that you wanted and you're so excited about just tearing open those presents. That's the closest thing I can come to um, what fishing means to me and, and how happy it makes me. Um, a lot of people ask me, um, is this something that you, you want to make a career out of? A lot of people told me you should be a guide, you should, you know, get your own show, you should, you know, do all these different things. You should get paid to fish. You do it all the time anyway. Um, yeah, I definitely want a career in fishing. Um, my dream is to have a show. I would love to teach people just the little aspects of fishing that um, I know. I, I just have a lot of ideas that I haven't seen before on TV. Um, there's a lot of a lot of shows where people catch fish. That's you know great. That's what we do. Um, I, I would like to encourage women to get out there more. Um, I, I see them at the different shows, the trade shows. Uh, I see them, you know, in the stores, and, and they, they just look so lost. They don't know where to start, and they're, they're intimidated by it. I'm, I'm the kind of person where I just don't get intimidated. If somebody tells me I can't do something, it makes me push that much harder to do it. If it's something I want to do, I really just don't care what anybody else thinks because it's something that's in me that I have desire to do. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know. I've, I've had people say, you, you, there's no way you're going to make it in fishing. There's no way... You know, people are going to accept you or whatever, and I've been very well accepted. People love the fact that I fish. The ones that don't, that's okay. They can go about their way, and I'll go about mine. Um, but I, I know there are a lot of people out there that do get intimidated, and it's a sport that has been mostly dominated by men. And, you know, I think with with these times in, in this world, it's good for women to be out there fishing. There are so many single moms out there. Um, they have a lot of kids that want to fish and you know the dads may not be in their lives you know whatever the case may be or the dads just don't fish and the kid really has a desire and as a mom you want your children to be able to try the different things that they want to try um, you want them to experience different things in life and you know fishing may be something that they take on like I did from six years old that stayed with me all these years and I love to see the little girls out there on the river or on different lakes. Um, I'm seeing more and more kids out ice fishing uh, when we're on the ice, and I love that. I love seeing that. Um, not as many women out there, but there, there's there's a few. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a lot of different ideas that I would like to put into play one day um, with the TV show or, or if I can or whatnot, um, just, to, just to give them the confidence to get out there and to try it, and I'm sure they would love it. Um...